I love the way the Lord is setting us up for harvest. That's the word I want to have you stick in your, in your mind this morning, uh, in your spirit, harvest. Uh, there's, there's something much greater coming our way. Um, it's not going to come the way people are thinking it's going to come because the Lord never dishes it out that way. But harvest comes in a number of different ways, not just from preaching behind pulpits, but as you're out in the workplace, in the life place where you live, where you work, where you go to school, where you go for entertainment, all these different things is a fertile ground for harvest. And what I want to do here this morning is just draw your attention to some things here, because I want you to understand, first of all, what kind of church is on the rise. And I want you to understand that the same spirit that is in the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers will and is in everyone else. If you don't have a function, if you're not called to this kind of ministry in the church, you're called to your own ministry, where you live, where you work, you know, to bear witness to Christ, uh, to share his love with people, to pray for their healing, to pray for their deliverance, pray for their families. It's wherever you live. But I want you to understand there, there is a, a mutual uh, embrace of the heart of God in all of this. We, this is the great thing is that before we're all done with this, you and I will have the same heart and it will be like Jesus. It will really be like him. And, and we will care like he, he cares. So what I'd like you to do first of all here this morning is I'd like to take a look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah 23, and in looking at Jeremiah 23, uh, it's, a, it's a very significant chapter. We, if you've ever been in ministry, you, you know how important this chapter is um, because the Lord is uh, dealing with uh, his shepherds. As a matter of fact, they're, they're, they're called shepherds here, and he is dealing with them. Uh, now, you have to understand that when the Lord is talking about his Old Testament servants, ministers being shepherds, he's not talking about literal, you know, shepherds. He's talking about it would be the prophets, it would be the priests, and it would be the kings. Those were the individuals over his people in the Old Testament. And yet what they carried was to be the same heart and same care for his people. Jeremiah 23 is the chapter, a very significant chapter, like I said. And I want you to see this because I believe it'll, it's going to help you uh, in coming into the place that God has for you. And I'm going to uh, do something here. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so what I'd like you to see well, let's just begin in verse one to get a little context. The Lord isn't very happy with his shepherds, okay, woe to the shepherds and 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 let anybody else in the entire universe say woe to you like like this. But never let God say, woe to you. Uh, I mean, this is, this is heavy stuff. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel, against the shepherds who feed my people, you scatter my flock, driven them away and not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for the evil of your doing, says the Lord. But I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries where I have driven them and bring them back to their folds and they shall be fruitful and increase. So there's the heart of God bringing all of his people back into the place he has for them and they become exceedingly fruitful and increase. And look at this. Verse four is what I'd like you to see. And I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, nor shall they be lacking, says the Lord. A very significant 
passage because what's said here is the Lord, it's in the Lord's heart to raise up individuals, shepherds, who will feed his people. Now remember when he was restoring Peter, the one thing the Lord did for Peter, three times with three questions, Peter, do you love me? And each time Peter answered in the affirmative, I do, Lord, he said, okay, prove it. Prove that you love me by feeding and taking care of my sheep. So it's not just saying, I love you, Lord, that's, that's easy, but it's then feeding his sheep. And what you see here is in these last days is that God is raising up shepherds. Don't think of just pastors. It's all the fivefold ministry, and it's his church. It's his church. His church is going to be the bride. His church makes up this end-time army. There may be leaders in it, and there will be, but we will have the same heart. We will be of one heart. And one mouth and one mind moving in the same direction our Lord is taking us. Because we will be a church of leaders from the least to the greatest. And if there's one thing that marks leaders is their first followers. You don't know any true leader who is first not a follower. And they follow the Lord. They do it His way. At whatever the personal cost. See? So, you know, a little 21-day Daniel fast, and that's the easy one, you know? Man, you get to eat uh, whatever you get to eat, beans and veggies, and you know? And, and that's the easy one. But I'm just saying, you do it. Because He's raising up shepherds who have His heart, who will lead His flock. And it, and it has, you understand, and it's just perfect, like Melissa shared, it has to start from the top and it flows down. Like with Aaron, the oil, it starts at the top and then that oil flows down. So in, in this church, it starts with the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And then if they've got it, then they're able to dispense it and it flows down to the rest of the body. So the Lord in this last day is raising up shepherds who have his heart, who are willing to follow him and do it his way. And as a result of that, look what happens with the people. Three things. First of all, they'll no longer be afraid. Being delivered from fear. They will no longer be afraid. If there's one thing that's true about the end time church, beloved, is it will not be afraid. It doesn't fear the devil. It doesn't fear a demon. It doesn't fear a man or a woman or anything on the earth. No fear. No fear. And of course, we know, like Paul was telling young Timothy, he said, listen, God hasn't, Timothy, God hasn't given you a spirit of fear but a power, love, and a sound mind. And the end time church is going to realize that, knows that we have a spirit a power, love, and we are sound here. We know we have the mind of Christ. That's what he means by that. Just that, not that you're smart, you know, but you have the mind of Christ. You got a sound mind. You think like God. You got a heart like God. And, and so it, it starts with the shepherds and it flows down. This is why Moses, and it's a very interesting passage in the Old Testament, God told Moses out of all the tribes of Israel to pick the men who were most like him. Because you can't have people, men or women, leading God's people who uh, are poverty-stricken, sickly, um, have insecurity problems, uh, are fearful. You, you can't have God leaders leading God because that gets transmitted off to them. I'm afraid. Oh, I don't know about that. You know, I, well, I don't think God wants to prosper me in that. And, and he does. 
And so you get delivered of the poverty spirits. You get delivered of the insecurities. You get delivered of the fears. And so it starts with the shepherds. It always starts. That, that's why the Lord is coming down on these shepherds. You might want to read all of Jeremiah 23 on your own time at home. The reason he comes uh, is going to bring judgment against those shepherds, those prophets, priests, and kings. And you know the history of Israel. how He, he destroyed the whole nation because they were not faithful to communicate his heart and his word and his mind. They did not keep the law. Now, we're not under the law. We're under grace. Beloved, God is raising up men and women in this this end time who have all the law inside them as far as the purity and the power and the morals and the ethics and everything that is holy and godly and right and righteous and pure. They got that in them. And they are most jealous for their God. And they will not compromise. So it starts with the shepherds. You know, when this shepherd invited all of you shepherds, join me in a 21-day fast. I don't know if any of you respond or not or blew me off like, (laughs) that doesn't make any difference. Okay, that's between you and the Lord, the, the shepherd. But I'm telling you, are you hearing what the Spirit is saying to the church? Um, so the very first thing you get delivered from the shepherds is fear. Get delivered to fear. So, you know, you're going into a nation, Kenya, typhoid fever, yellow fever, malaria, hep A, hep B, and you're going in. Why? Because the Lord called you. Because the Lord is sending you. Listen, folks, at this stage in my life, I don't have to go to Kenya. I don't have to do that like young bucks want to do it. You know, send me, Lord. You know, I don't have to do that. But I heard him, and I just saw a green light come on. Boom. So you go. Because this is something that uh, is, is in my heart, but it's also it was in his heart first. So, you know, I'm having to jump through all kinds of hoops. Pray for me because I'm having to jump through all kinds of hoops with this COVID thing. I got to get pre-tested here and pre-tested on the other end. You know, I got to be clear on all that. I got to go through all of that, you know. So just pray for me. Uh, I'm, I'm reading, and I hope you do too, Psalm 91 just about every day, claiming the promises of God's protection. But the first thing you get delivered from is fear. fear. So, you know, if the Lord wants you to speak up there, you're down over there in Walmart. And, you know, the Lord says, you see that little man over there? I want you to go over and speak to him about me. Then say, uh, uh, well, Lord, if, if he walks around me three times and then pushes a cart into me and then hits me between the eyes, then I, I'll know it's you. So, so the Lord is trying to get us delivered all that delusional stuff, see, and all that fear. Now, now the second thing, did you notice what, what happens here? And this is beautiful. Not only do they get delivered of the fear, uh, they're no longer dismayed. I, I realize I have the responsibility not to discourage you. Now, that doesn't mean I can't, I can't preach to you, I can't admonish you, or I can't even rebuke you. See, the American church, for the most part, they, they, a lot of them could never handle any of that. But we're not talking about the American church. We're talking about Jesus's. Not man's church, but Jesus's. His church. And remember how Paul told young Timothy, the pastor at the time, tell these people, and, and be in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering, that they may be what God wants them to be. You ought to read 1 Timothy. It's, you'll get real, really educated. Matter of fact, every minister, you ought to read First and Second Timothy and Titus because that's addressing you. That's addressing you. You paying attention? It's addressing you. You ought to read those chapters or listen to them, one of the two, and hear what the Lord is saying through them. Because that's Paul talking to Timothy, guys your age. So, so the thing is, so the next thing is, is that we lead you in a way to where you're not discouraged. 
And, and, you, and you see, you always have to put yourself, and I hope you do when you read your Bible, put yourself in the times that Paul is saying that. Or Jeremiah would have been prophesying that. And Jeremiah is living in a city, and he's in prison. He's been slapped around and in prison. And the Babylonians are outside the walls, and they're coming in. And they're going to be leveling the city. And that's Jeremiah. I just, Lord, give me the heart of Jeremiah. Give me the courage of Jeremiah. And he's prophesying this. And he's rebuking the priests and kings and the prophets of his day who are saying, oh, look, peace, 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 peace. Nothing's going to happen to Israel. All's going to be good. It's all going to be okay. No, nah, no, no, no. And I want to say, I want to tell you, I'm not saying that about America either. There are going to be things arise in America. Glory. But I want to encourage you to put your faith and trust in God. I want to encourage you to seek God. I want to encourage you. Because this encouragement, you see, once you get that, it's a matter of, of your identity again. Uh, and you're not dismayed. You're not discouraged. You're not defeated. You see? You walk in victory. You have a victory about you that you can carry and you can help others who are hopeless. Who are afraid. Who are discouraged. And that's your, that's, you know, a part of that is the heart of a compassion. You, you care about them. And so you reach out to them. You speak to them. So, so the first thing is this, is that these shepherds are going to feed God's people. His people get delivered from fear. They get delivered from uh, discouragement, doubt and defeat and all of those things. And then the third thing you notice here, it says that they're lacking nothing. They lack nothing. Awesome. We get to lead the church forward to where not a single individual is lacking a thing. Matter of fact, this has a it's like this last one is like a like a two edged sword, it, and it's very it's razor sharp. One way it means they're not lacking in that they haven't quit, they haven't departed from the flock. They're not they're not lacking in presence. They're not lacking in uh, attendance. They're still there. They're still faithful and you can count on them. That's, that's one edge of the sword. And the other, other edge of the sword is literally they don't lack. They got everything they need. All the provision of God is coming their way. And they're able to walk in it. Now this is what true shepherds bring you. This is what end time shepherds bring you. They bring you these things. First, they've been fed themselves, and they're in a place with God themselves to where God can use them. And then they bring the word like Peter. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Well, then you feed my sheep. You take care of my sheep. You, t you, you, you take care of those little lambs. And so um, this is what they bring. Now, the reason for all that is because the Lord is very earnest about the harvest. See, I, know, I knew I'd get there. But he's very earnest about the harvest. And, and the harvest is going to be reaped. You say, oh, I know that one by the angels. Yes, yes, but it's after men have spoken to men. It's after men have spoken to men. God hasn't given the gospel, the everlasting gospel, into the care of angels. You and me. Jude says... He says, listen, church, you, you earnestly contend for this faith. Not be contentious, argumentative, critical. None of that's, no, you contend for it. You say, no, I, I'm sorry, but that transgender stuff, that's all the perversion. That's a delusion and that's confusion. No, I'm, I'm sorry, that, that the, uh, the uh, homosexuals and lesbians and all of that, that in Bible is described uh, in the Hebrew as sodomy. Right. They're sodomites. Yep. Oh, you say, oh, you can't use that language, Pastor Jeff. I just did. I just did. Does that mean I hate them? No, I, I'm praying for them. No, I mean I really do. Don't say you are if you don't. And I have one in mind right now. I'm praying for them. But there is this thing that God is doing in this day that is most marvelous. And uh, he's getting us ready. You know, uh, so uh, what I want you to see here is in Matthew chapter 9. 
Big J, can you take me to Matthew chapter 9? See how we do here. Matthew chapter 9. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is to go down to verse 35. I guess we don't have that up. Do we have it there? Yeah, good. Are you able to move around back there? Get it up there? Okay. And in verse 35... And there's just been a whole lot going on with the Lord up until this point. He's been healing people and blind are seeing and the deaf are speaking and all these good things are going on. And, uh, and then beginning in verse 35, I love this. this. This is the heart of the Lord. Wow. Then Jesus went about, glory to God, went about all the cities and villages teaching in the synagogues, holding tent meetings. Glory to God. Well, he wasn't holding tent meetings. But he's going about all the cities and the villages and he's teaching. And he's preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And he's healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Isn't that cool? (laughs) It is so cool. I want my ministry like that. And when he saw the multitudes, instead of seeing them as a, a point of irritation, Well, they're always calling. They're always texting me. They're always bothering me. No. Remember how how often Jesus would seek to get off by himself, be alone to pray? And remember after John Baptist got beheaded and he he was just informed of that? And it said immediately he left to an isolated place. But then the people found out he was going there. And when he got there, who was this mammoth crowd? He couldn't even get away. You, you, you ever had someone you love die? I remember when my mom and dad died within three days of each other. I really didn't want to talk to too many people. You know, I just kind of caught up in that. Well, the Lord, you know, he's a man. He loved John B. He loved John Baptist. That was his cousin. Anyway, he sees the multitudes and what is he moved with? Compassion passion because the people are weary and they're scattered like sheep with no shepherd man so he says this he says to his disciples he says listen the harvest truly is plenteous but the laborers the workers are few pray the lord of the harvest to set out labors send out labors to his harvest now, harvest is on his mind, and the reason for that, three times here he says he speaks of harvest. First thing he says is it's plentiful. The next thing he says that pray to the Lord of the harvest. The Lord of the harvest. Jesus is the Lord of the harvest. Guess what the Lord is getting ready to do? Bring a harvest. He's bringing a harvest. He's going to bring a harvest. He's going to put in his sickle, and he's going to harvest, and it's coming. It's not going to be at my convenience or yours. He's just going to come and do it. But the laborers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest to raise up men and women who have his heart to go after the harvest. And then the last thing is is I want you to see is that uh, we are to pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. So, you know, I'm thrilled. You know, Jonathan, uh, Isaac, uh, Matt, Eckhart doing this thing, launching out into ministry. Hallelujah. You know, that, but this is just the, the beginnings of things. You know, we, we haven't entered into this uh, in earnest, but, you know, you got to get started somewhere. And for me to go to Kenya, see, there's a part of that harvest thing. You see, we have to understand the Lord is very serious about reaping his harvest. He's more serious about it than the church is. So he's, he's, he's positioning men and women into a place to where they can gather the harvest, be used in the harvest. And, and he's positioning it, and, and what he's going to do is anoint them in such a way 
that there will be no denying that Jesus Christ is Messiah, that he's the Savior. Be no denying it. So the Lord is doing this. And so, so a part of the thing that, that I pray for, and I hope you do too, is for men and women to be on the rise. Jesus said, remember what the Lord said, Jeremiah 23, I will set up shepherds. That word set, I looked it up in the Hebrew, it means I will raise them up. I will raise up shepherds who will feed my flock. And so this is what we want to do. We, we want to be in this, this beautiful place with him to where he can um, use us to feed his flock and equip them, get them delivered of fear, get them delivered of all the uh, misidentity things that come along with it. And then, of course, uh, the, the last one as well about moving them into that place of uh, being, uh, well, faithful and loyal, if I can just say it. Uh, you have to understand, you know, uh, many times, you know, people, they don't, they won't stick with you. I don't say that as discouragement. I, I, I'm encouraged, see? But after 50 years of this, people come and go. And uh, if it's the Lord, I say, Amen. If it's not the Lord, I say, oh, my. And, and there's a reason I say, oh, my, because they just moved out of his perfect will. And they're out there doing their own thing. Yeah. And so the Lord is doing this because he's very concerned about the harvest. So let me let me show you this and I'll, I'll close with this. I don't want to keep you beyond what I should another Two or three hours or whatever. Anyway, uh, Matthew 21. <laughs> what was that, Chess? <laughs> oh, Lord. Praise the Lord. Matthew 21 is another one of those great passages. Jesus has been busy here, your Lord. He's, oh, man, he's come triumphantly into the city of Jerusalem. He's cleaned up the temple. Uh, he's caused the fig tree, the wither, you know, all these really cool things. Um, and then his his authority gets questioned about about you know why he's doing all these things and he answers that uh, there's the parable of the two sons there's the uh, the last one that I want you to see begins in verse 33 you remember about the Lord is very earnest about his harvest now I want you to know the Lord is going to reap his harvest whether I'm a part of it or not right. say so he he's going to do it. And he, he can, uh, like John, John Baptist, say, the Pharisees thought, Sage thought they were some big deal. John Baptist said, now look, look, the Lord can just raise up people like you out of these rocks. So you never want to think you're kind of a big deal. The Lord, because the Lord can take one of those little stones like Peter, oh, raise him up. He comes a big stone. You know, so anyway. Here another parable. So sit up. No, it's not up there. Okay, here we go. Verse 33, and this is really important. I'm just, allow me to read a few verses here. I, I'm, a, I'm a good reader by the grace of God and with the anointing. I can read good. Here another parable. There was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. And he leased it to vine dressers and went into a far country. When the vintage time drew near... He sent his servants to the vine dressers that they might receive its fruit. And the vine dressers took his servants, beat one, killed another, stoned another. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did likewise to them. Then, last of all, he sent his son, saying, They'll respect my son. But when the vine dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, Well, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him. And seize his inheritance. So they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will we do with those vine dressers? And everybody who was listening to him shared to say, well, he'll destroy those wicked men miserably and lease his vineyard to other vine dressers who will render to him the fruits in their seasons. And Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the Scriptures the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone? And this is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. The ones that people reject. 
the Lord chooses. I like that. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation or a people bearing the fruits of it. Whoever falls on this stone will be broken, but on whomever it falls, it will grind them to powder. You know, he's talking about himself. You know, you just fall on the Lord Jesus. Lord, have mercy upon me. And you're preserved. But don't ever let him fall on you in judgment. This is what he's talking about at the end of the age. Grind the wicked to powder. Not literally, but you get the imagery. Now, when the chief priests and Pharisees heard his parables, they, they just said, Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. No. <laughs> no, they perceived he was talking about them. And when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitudes because they took him for a prophet. Glory to God. Isn't that good? Jesus is our prophet. Well, the thing I want you to understand, the Lord is looking. He's coming to his vineyard, beloved, and he is looking for his harvest. He is looking to reap a harvest. And the people who deny his harvest, who reject his servants who come to him for harvest, he's going to judge. He's going to deal with them. And the harvest, beloved, is there and it's on the rise. It's a part of what God is doing in the earth today. And maybe, if, you know, if you're on some social media sites that are pretty good and solid. You understand that there's different revivals taking place in different places with different uh, kind of leaders, whether they're song leaders or they're prophets or they're uh, 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 pastors, shepherds. There's, there's revivals breaking out in different places. And this is the way it's been seen. It'll just kind of start slow. You know, it'll just kind of you get know, a little here and a little there and a little here. And the thing will just keep, keep growing. It'll just kind of keep growing. It'll become a great flow a great like like a lava, you know, lava, you know, spewing out and just covering all things. And the fire of God is with it, and, and the purity of God's people, uh, uh, because He comes and He reveals Himself to them. But you notice here, the Lord beloved is very, very concerned about the harvest. So go for the harvest. Give to Jesus what He's looking for. And not what we think he should have. Give to Jesus the harvest. He's coming to you and he's looking for fruit. I mean, I can just name nine of them right now. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness. Are you growing in those, developing in those? I mean, you know, are you, huh? I mean, just that fruit. And then there's all the other kinds of fruit. That, that spring out of those fruits. You see, so the Lord is coming. He's coming for his harvest and he's looking for it. And, and you're going to be go looking for it. Because you've got to have your heart come into harmony with the fact, I'll be a laborer. Will you be a laborer? Will you be a laborer? Will you be a laborer? Because we want to see the lost saved. We want to get them baptized in water. And baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then take them on from there. And disciple them. So the Lord is setting his church up for these things in these last days. And he's such a great shepherd. Such a beautiful shepherd. He knows how to show compassion and be very gentle with the gentle. And with the rough, he's rough. But in his gentleness, he'll take the rough in his gentleness and make them great. See, there was a character by the name, oh yeah, David, King David. That your gentleness has made me great. So are you hearing what the Lord is saying to you this morning? Lord, I'm hearing it and I'm convicted by my own message because I'm reading out of the book. I'm reading out of the book, and that convicts me. It really provokes me. It's what it does. It stirs me up. 
You know, I'm supposed to provoke you into godliness and holiness. Provoke you. Are you provoked? In a good way? Stirred up? Things are going to change? You're not just going to keep floating along like you are? Same level of spirituality or religion or whatever you got? I mean, are you... Are you grabbing a hold of this thing? You know, I want you to grab a hold of your Savior. I want you to grab a hold of the Lord Jesus. I want you to love Him with all of your being. I want you to follow Him. I want you to do His will. I want you to just talk to the Lord like this, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, uh, may the Father's will be done today. May our Father's will be done today. And let His will be done. And he actually let the Lord work that in your life, in your heart, and, and move you in these ways to bring you into the place he has for you. So, so do you know him as your Lord and Savior? Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? You have to answer for yourself. But, but if you have, have you been baptized in water? Following him in the first step of obedience water baptism and you step in the water baptism and you're baptized and are you filled with the spirit of God filled with the spirit asking the Lord to fill you with the spirit and if you've been filled with the spirit you're still asking him to fill you with the spirit and you have those supernatural manifestations that come through you that just separate things out And the demonic and Satan can't touch you like he does everybody else. Because you're building yourself up in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Because you're desiring to be used in the gifts of the Spirit. The supernatural. Not just live in the natural. and Feed your belly. Pay your bills. And then you die and you go up to heaven in a hole in the sky. No, that's religion. Now God is wanting to do something with you marvelous. So he's setting us up. Setting us up. Listen, I want you to, to be in prayer about these things. I want you to be in prayer for yourself. I want you to be in prayer for yourself. And examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith. Hello. It's true. I'm not saying anything that's not in the book. It's right in there. It's like Prego spaghetti sauce. It's in there. It's in there. So so God is changing us. And he, the way this happens, I'll close, I promise. It's from the inside out. It's from the inside out. And this transformation takes place. Line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. You know that when they jack a house up where the foundation is cattywampus, that's Greek for it's not level, but but it is salvageable. They'll put floor jacks underneath that thing. Do you know you can? Just take those floor jacks and just and just jack that house right back up into place. So all the walls and everything just kind of go back together and everything. Do you know within 24 to 48 hours that house will just go explodes? Because it can't stand the pressure of the newness that's come to it. So you just take that jack and you just turn it about an eighth maybe a quarter. You let it set for a week. And you come back and you go, another quarter, you let it set for a week, slowly coming back into alignment. You want to know why the Lord, some of you are saying, oh Lord, do it, 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 do it. You know why the Lord doesn't do it, do it, do it, do it? Because you'd go, We well, think all about me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're no different than any of the rest of us. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Listen to this old man. I'm telling you, 
He just, just little by little by little. Because then when it comes, it is the foe's precious treasure. You so uh, are so humbled by it. You so appreciate it. You're so thankful for it. Because the Lord is in, in, the Lord is in control of these things. Amen. Not men. You make the right choices. You make the right decisions. And then God continues to set things up so you have divine appointments. Not just appointments, but divine ones. Amen. And he's able to open the doors. And like Maggie said, or Melissa, whichever one, either, either prophet, this was good. The government's on his shoulder. So he's controlling it all. See, look, it's not the White House. It's the throne room. Some of you, get your eyes off all that nonsense. I'm going to keep warning you. If you keep looking at it, it's going to kill you. How do you know that, Pastor Jeff? Because Jesus said men will look at the things coming on the face of the earth and their hearts will give out. So don't be looking at the things rising on the earth. Put your eyes on your Savior. You will be fed. You won't be afraid. No, you won't be. No, not you. Maybe everybody else, but not you. You will be courageous and have victory and joy and peace. You won't be discouraged. And you will have the integrity and character, the loyalty and the faithfulness that marks a son of God in the last days is going to be manifested for all the earth, Romans 8. And you will never lack financially, materially, or in any other way. And the Lord will make sure of it. So, in saying all of that this morning, I want you to have harvest on your mind. Harvest. And think about what God is wanting to do with you in these last days with respect to the harvest. It'll be the greatest joy of your life to be a part of the end time harvest. It really will. And where the Lord is using you in the most marvelous ways to lead the hopeless and the homeless and the down and out into life. And it'll be the greatest joy of your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My Father in heaven, we want to thank you that the work you're doing in our lives uh, is not by it's not by our own power, our own strength. It's nothing to do, Father, with the fact that we will it, but what you will. Thy will be done, Heavenly Father, on earth as it is in heaven. And so each time you do his will, you're bringing heaven to earth. Each time you do his will, you're bringing heaven to earth. So, Father, help us to bring heaven to earth in our own lives first and then everywhere else. Father, we ask you to continue to deal with us and bring us into this place of harvest in these last days. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Great God. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, I just pray that... that uh, you see the significance of the hour in which you're living. You know, it's, it's harvest time. One of the most fun I had as a boy was at harvest time. My grandfather was a, was a farmer. So we're going way back. And he had a one-row corn picker. It picked one row. And it, it didn't shell them out. You know, it's nothing like you have today. It had a one-row corn picker. And it picked the whole ears. And my brother and I would love to get up in that grain wagon behind that one row corn picker. And just as the ears would keep falling in, we would jump between them and dodge them, you know, and, and get smacked with them and all. And we just keep riding that wagon until that, you know, that wagon filled up and we're sitting on top of it, you know. It was harvest time. And I remember how we, you know, 
we'd see deer and rabbits, you know, they'd go busting out of the corn, you know, standing corn and, and uh, the crisp air. And then we would, we'd always have those great farmer lunches, you know, three or four sandwiches, you know, you know what I'm talking about? You know, you're a farmer, you work it off. So it was just always so good. Harvest time. There's nothing like harvest time. And I want you, I want you to, I want to encourage you, go, go home and read Ruth and read about uh, this young woman who knew how to harvest and she was in the fields gleaning harvest time. And because she was willing to do that, she moved into a place to become an ancestress of Christ. And the Lord wants you to be able to experience the same kind of joy as she had. See, it's not, it's not just the Esthers, it's the Ruths as well, who will never stand like Esther in the courts of the emperor, but they will stand with their husband in the gates. So seek it all. It's all yours. Why don't you stand with me? Hallelujah. Be in prayer for me. I covet that. Next week, by the way, Chris Reed will be with us. Young Chris. Hallelujah. Looking forward to having him. The week after that, we're going to have Doc, Dr. Prophet Tim Hines. Dr. Tim will be in. He's going to be ministering. So we got some good things coming. And I've asked him, you know, I've been praying. I want you to pray for him too. The Lord will bring us a word for us. And... Uh, the great liberty to move and flow in the things of the Spirit as God wills. And let's see what God will do. All right? Well, isn't that good? Praise the Lord. I'm Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes.
<laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah. Well, amen, saints. Love you. Leah, you didn't have anything to share, did you? Uh, why? Are you sure? You're positive. Okay. Praise the Lord. You got a sweet, pretty little baby there. Okay. You're sure. Okay. Okay. All right. In season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So I think I've done that this morning. And I want you to feel good as you go out of here. So I love you. Love you, saints. Love you. All right. Have a great week. Hope to see you Tuesday night or Wednesday night or even Thursday night. Praise the Lord. I mean, you know, pick. Thank you for joining us. Jeff Barnett is pastor at Genesis Church, 357 Tanger, T-A-N-G-E-R Boulevard, Suite 206, Seymour, Indiana, 47274. Join us each Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We are located between U.S. 31 and I-65 on the north side of U.S. 50 in the shops at Seymour. Come early to get a seat. You can also find us on YouTube and Facebook, Genesis Church of Seymour. For more information about Genesis Church of Seymour, visit our websites, SeymourGenesis.com and GenesisRecordings.com. And for those of you who are wanting to partner with us, download the Tithely app, which you can get the links from GenesisRecordings.com or you can go directly to SeymourGenesis.com slash give. Thank you again for joining us, and may God's Word continue to grow in your life.